Just ahead on Hawkeye Sports Report, another instant classic in East Lansing. How did the Hawks do it and what does this win mean moving forward? We'll hear from coaches, players, and have the full breakdown coming up. And the men's and women's basketball seasons are right around the corner. Both teams have high expectations. Hear what they had to say at their annual media days coming up on another edition of Hawkeye Sports Report. Well, the conditions weren't ideal Saturday in East Lansing as rain, wind, and cold temperatures fell upon Spartan Stadium. But the football team showed a will, and they found a way to come out on top in double overtime. This week, they focused their attention to Penn State, who, like the Hawks, have relied heavily on their defense and are also 2-0 in the conference. Coaches and players are happy to be back in Kinnick Stadium this week with a chance to go 3-0, especially for their only night game of the season. Uh, as I said, Terry, really happy to get the win and, and nice to see uh, Mike Meyer uh, be, you know, uh, recognized and uh, hitched to, you know, both guys uh, recognized by several organizations. So happy for those guys. And, you know, we flipped the page uh, Monday and, you know, got a really another big challenge on our hands this weekend coming up. Uh, Penn State comes into town and uh, they've won four straight games, as I know you know, and uh, they're really playing well. Weren't many people picking Iowa or Penn State to be 3-0 and to start the year in the Big Ten. Kind of a surprising matchup, you think, nationally? Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, we knew what kind of team we had. You know, we were working through some things, obviously, uh, early in the year, but, you know, we just kept on working. That's all you can do, and I'm sure they, they kind of went through the same thing. So uh, I think we're similar teams in that. We're pretty resilient and uh, keep playing, and uh, it'll be definitely a tough matchup this weekend. Both teams do a good job at turnovers. You guys are leading the conference tied at turnover margin. What's the mentality for, for trying to take the ball away? Yeah, it's just a, it's a conscious thought, you know, trying to get the ball out, um, being in the right place at the right time, stripping the ball. Um, you know, when the ball's in the air, we feel like it's our ball. You know, we got to go up and get it and uh, make a play for the, and get the ball back for our offense. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're an extremely deep defense and uh, <laughs> they're talented again this year. They're extremely well coached again. Um, do some things different maybe than they did in the past, but uh, a very sound defense that, once again, similar story to last week, is going to make it hard to run the ball and uh, got some guys back there that can cover. So uh, we're going to have to have our best shot to, to put some points on the board. Brother Brian had a chance to work alongside a guy like Bill O'Brien in New England. Mm -hmm. How much does that maybe play into the preparation this week, just him maybe knowing some things to expect? Um, you know, I don't know. I don't think there's a lot of mysteries in our two football right. teams. I know Coach O'Brien's a phenomenal coach, and, uh, you know, Penn State has a real winner in him. But, uh, you know, you watch both of us on tape. You know what we're going to do and what both teams are all about. And, uh, you know, it should make for a great, exciting battle, you know, Saturday night. Floats it down the middle. Robinson, touchdown. First down. Maxwell thrilled to the ball. Came out. Five yards to the five-yard line for your third down play. Weissman to the end zone. Maxwell throws to Mumphrey. Was tipped. Picked off. Iowa wins. A huge win on the road for the Hawkeyes as Castillo comes up with the game-winning INT. We now welcome in Hawkeye Radio Network's Rob Brooks. Rob, you look a little more dry than you were on Saturday. Well, I just got the last few raindrops off me. Where was my umbrella? Next time. Well, next get, time you got to help me out. Maybe it'll be snow next time. <laughs> Let's hope not. Yeah. Well, what a big win it was up in East Lansing for, the, for Iowa over Michigan State. What does that type of win do for this Iowa football team? I mean, confidence. I mean, what a huge job by Iowa to go on the road, hostile environment, get that victory at Spartan Stadium. I think when you look at this football team today versus maybe walking off the turf at Kinnick after the Central Michigan game, boy, just a light year is away. It's a, a distant memory. But I think when you get a division victory on the road like Iowa did at Michigan State, that's like winning one and a half, two games. And then when you look at the Big Ten this weekend, Michigan State at Michigan, huge game. Nebraska at Northwestern. Let those four teams kind of battle it out, and then Iowa takes care of business, hopefully against Penn State, and then that really sets the tone for the rest of the way. Big difference maker in that game up at Michigan State was kicker Mike Meyer, and he's really improved this year and really been a spark plug for this team. Yeah, once again, confidence. I mean, are you confident when he steps out Absolutely. on the field? Yes. <laughs> he's going yes. to knock him through. 14 out of 15 so far this year. And it's fun to talk to Mike Meyer about his mental side of kicking because he's become great friends with Nate Kading, one of the all-time greats. And Nate Kading gave him some good advice and said, you know, when you're kicking a kick, whether it's in practice or a game, make it like it's to win the Super Bowl. And that is the philosophy that he has taken. He looks calm, cool, and collected, whether it's a 50-yarder or an extra point. 
They all look the same, and that's a key factor in why he's been so good. Yep, we're going to need him the rest of the year, too. And Iowa played against a tough defense last week in Michigan State, another tough defense coming in this weekend in Penn State. I think when you look at the Big Ten, you, you think about teams that are improving week to week, and certainly Penn State is doing that on both sides of the football. You kind of look at the Nittany Lions. Uh, what could have happened to them after two weeks? Losing to Ohio at home, losing to Virginia. Well, Bill O'Brien has uh, rallied the troops. They've won four in a row. The defense is solid. We knew that going in, but the passing game continues to get better. Matt McGloin, first in the conference, averaging 250 yards per game, and his favorite target is Allen Robinson, and this is a dynamic receiver. First in receiving yards in the Big Ten Conference, and Bill O'Brien talked about McGloin and his knowledge of a brand new offense is really progressing week after week. So. They are playing much better now than they were a month ago, kind of like the Hawkeyes. Yep, that's a storyline for Penn State. The storyline for Iowa is going to be the status of Mark Weissman. Do you see him going? If he's not there, what does this mean for the offense? Well, it's uh, been this way the entire year. Uh, Damon Bullock doesn't look like he's going to play. So if Mark Weissman can't go, you turn to Greg Garman, who got a little bit of time last week at Michigan State. And then does the red shirt come off Jordan Kanzeri? He has been begging Coach Ferentz to get on the football field. Does that happen on Saturday? But I think the way this offensive line is playing, anybody that's back there is going to be successful. How do you see this game playing out, and what maybe is the difference for Iowa to have to come out on top here? Well, I look at a night game, 7 o'clock, Kinnick Stadium. I mean, how difficult is it to come into Iowa's home field and get a victory? Very, very difficult. Once again, getting off to an outstanding start, being able to establish that run and use the play-action pass, and then that defense has to play like it's been playing the last couple of weeks. You look at the improvement of that defense, especially across the front line, it's just been phenomenal. They just have to keep that going, and I think they will. Like Rob said, that game will kick off at 7 p.m. under the lights in Kinnick Stadium. Rob, thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Don't forget to wear your black and gold also for that football game. We'll be right back with more Hawkeye Sports Report. Let's now take a look at how each fall team and competition fared over the weekend. The 11th ranked field hockey team earned a split over the weekend, defeating nationally ranked Drexel 3-1 on Friday. However, the Hawks had their work cut out for them Sunday as they lost to 7th ranked Penn State 5-1. The volleyball team looked to improve their win streak with games against Minnesota and Wisconsin Friday and Saturday. However, the 10th ranked Gophers beat Iowa 3 sets to 1, and the Badgers had just enough in the tank to edge Iowa 3 sets to 2. Soccer also had a rough weekend as they dropped both of their home matches to Ohio State and Penn State 4-1 and 2-1 respectively. The cross-country teams were also in action over the weekend. Marika Shrula had an impressive race, finishing 12th out of 323 runners. Senior Nick Holmes led the men's team, finishing 81st at the pre-national meet in Louisville. And finally, the football team came out on top 19-16 in double overtime at Michigan State. The win was head coach Kirk Ferentz's 100th at Iowa. Let's now take a look at this week's play of the week. There's not much doubt about this one. It's the game winner from East Lansing as Louis Trinkapassat tips the pass in double overtime and Greg Castillo comes up with the walk-off interception in Iowa's thrilling win over the Spartans. That's this week's Hawkeye Sports Report Play of the Week. Men's basketball is coming off their first postseason tournament since 2006. Follow that up with landing one of the top recruiting classes in the nation. There is good reason for the hype that now finds itself surrounding this year's team. Matt Nelson has more. Media day here at the practice facility at Carver Hawkeye Arena for the Iowa men's basketball team. Lots of high hopes and expectations for the 2012-2013 season. Iowa returns eight letter winners and three starters from last year's squad that finished with a winning record at 18 and 17, tied for seventh in the Big Ten. In terms of our progression, uh, year one, we weren't sure exactly what we were going to, how we were going to end up. And we had some some excellent moments and some other struggles, but that was to be expected. Last year, we expected to improve, which we, we did. Uh, accomplished a lot of things uh, that we hadn't previous years, and then now, obviously, we want to get better. We've been working hard. We've had best off season and, uh, as a team that we've had since I've been here, and uh, we have a lot of talent. But, you know, I expect a lot out of these guys and a lot of myself, and uh, we got to take it up a whole nother level. This year, I could really say I'm looking forward to just wanting to be the, being one of the most biggest years of my life basketball-wise, and I just can't wait to play with my new teammates. I love the guys here, so I just know it's going to be a lot of fun. In addition to the veterans, five highly touted freshmen joined Coach McCaffrey's group. What we all hope for when we recruit freshmen is that they don't play like freshmen. And I don't think they will. 
Uh, I've, I definitely have a lot of confidence in my own game. Um, you have to have self-confidence to be, be good at this level. And I feel like the, the workouts and, and all the games, the AAU, Primetime League, all of that has helped prepare me for this. The Hawkeyes reached the second round of the NIT tournament last season and have their sights set on the big dance this year. You know, if we stay healthy and we make the progress that I think we can make, you know, I think we can be playing for, you know, be playing for a while. Obviously, we want to play into March. Big NCAA double tournament. I mean, um, something this, this program hasn't done in, what, eight years or so. So um, I think it's our job, you know, to, to rebuild this program. And I think Coach McCaffrey has it going the right way. And uh, we definitely have the talent to do it. Um, it's just, you know, um, putting ourselves together on the defensive end and, you know, winning the close games that we did not last year. At Carver Hawkeye Arena, Matt Nelson, Hawkeye Sports Report. The women's basketball team also has high expectations this season, coming off their fifth NCAA tournament in a row. This year, the NCAA tournament is right here in Iowa City, so a fast start to the season will be a must. The ever-so-busy Matt Nelson has more on what to expect from the women's team this season. Welcome to Iowa Women's Basketball Media Day here at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Bluters Bunch has its sights set on another NCAA tournament appearance, one that would start in this very building. We've also been awarded the NCAA first and second round tournaments. And that's a great honor. And we want to make the most of both of those tournaments being held here in Carver Hawkeye Arena. We're optimistic that we're going to be able to do that because we returned four starters from last year and also are welcoming five newcomers to our basketball team. All Big Ten performers Morgan Johnson, Samantha Logic, and Jamie Printy, returning from injury, headline a group of eight returning letter winners this season. Last season, the Hawkeyes finished 19-12 and 12 overall, tied for second in the Big Ten. I mean, it doesn't need to be one person. You know, one person doesn't need to be a leader. I think we can all be leaders in different aspects and things like that just to... You get everyone on the same page. It doesn't need to be one person, but I think everyone needs to step up a little bit because we did lose the, you know, the Kelly and the Camille. Jamie will be in a uniform on November 9th when we open up on our first game against Northern Illinois. I can't tell you if she'll be 100% at that point. I can tell you that she's working as hard as she can to get to that point. And I can tell you that I have 100% belief in her when she shoots the ball and that she will help our team reach our goals. I'm back out in the court scrimmaging in practice and doing almost full practices, so it's really coming along really well. Morgan Johnson, I think, is one of the best centers in the United States. Uh, Morgan, last year, was the seventh best field goal percentage shooter in the nation, and she was 26th best in block shots. Iowa has been to five straight NCAA tournaments. A sixth straight tournament would begin at home in Carver Hawkeye Arena. The Hawks want that, and they want more than just a tournament appearance. I think uh, we want to make a difference between this year and the previous three years of my career. Um, and to go further and deeper into the tournament, I think it's important that we take it one game at a time. I think it's important that we keep our mindset right now on doing things right every day at practice so that we transfer those over into becoming a good NCAA team. We have to have a good season, obviously, and take it one game at a time. But if we do make it to the tournament, it's going to be a great opportunity to play two games at home and try to get to that sweet, sweet 16. At Carver Hawkeye Arena, Matt Nelson, Hawkeye Sports Report. Thanks, Matt. Of course, don't forget the black and gold blowout will be this Friday in Carver Hawkeye Arena at 8 p.m. Tickets are just $5. This type of black and gold blowout has never been done here before, so be sure to come check it out. Let's now check out this week's Players of the Week. University of Iowa graduate student Marika Shrula was the top Hawkeye finisher at the Wisconsin Adidas Invitational in Madison last weekend. A personal best at 6,000 meters, she finished in 19 minutes, 57 seconds, good for 12th place overall. Our second player of the week is junior kicker Mike Meyer. Meyer connected on four field goals in soggy conditions at Michigan State Saturday. Two of those field goals came in overtime. He's hit 13 in a row. Those are the Hawkeye Sports Report Players of the Week. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and Wednesday night the Iowa Volleyball team held their annual pink match, a game in honor of all of those who have survived, are going through, or have been lost due to breast cancer. Through all the ups and downs of being a student athlete, the team recently played a big part in the annual breast cancer walk in City Park. Events like the pink match or the cancer walk are a big reminder that it's more than just what's in the win-loss column. Oh, <laughs> oh there you go! <laughs> 
beautiful Sunday morning. We're out at City Park. It's a wall. It's making strides to end breast cancer for Eastern Iowa. All the funds are going to the breast cancer fight through American Cancer Society. So it's a great day to be out, and you know, it's it's good, especially for us indoor sport athletes, to get out and enjoy the outdoors a little bit. We're out here just to support and show support in the community for breast cancer. It's a great thing, and you know, anything we can do in our community is an important thing. It's important because breast cancer is a huge cause, and. Um, we just want to be able to support everyone in the Iowa City area who's fighting for it, the survivors and um, people who have family members and friends going through it. And to the survivors, cancer sucks. And that is why being a survivor is so special. Thanks and have a great walk today. It affects a lot of people, so if anything we can do to get our support out to all those people is a great thing. Get volleyball out there and just to know that our support is for everyone here. Yeah! My grandma actually had breast <laughs> cancer when she was younger. and. Um, so it's kind of close to heart for me, but I mean, I feel like everybody can name someone they know going through it. So I think it's really important that we keep having events like this to raise awareness about it and raise money for it because, I mean, I think every single person matters and can make a difference in this fight for cancer. My mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, she, it was about when I was like eight. Um, I don't have the greatest memories from it, but I mean, knowing that she's a survivor now, it just makes things a lot better. I think it makes her happy to know that I still think about it and that I'm like helping the cause and knowing that it, it's still out there just because it's like left our family doesn't mean it's gone. Keep fighting, go fuck! I think it's important to support the survivors and the loved ones of the survivors and certainly even the loved ones of the battles lost. I mean this is this is a life fight that we have you know we think our opponents are present challenges for us, but the opponent that we're fighting today presents bigger challenges than we'll ever face on the volleyball court. Finally, let's take a look at what's going on this upcoming weekend in Iowa athletics. The men's and women's swimming team gets their season underway already Friday at Michigan State for an afternoon meet at 3 p.m. Field hockey has a double dip this weekend. Right here in Iowa City, they will host Kent State Saturday at noon before the football game and will turn around Sunday at the same time and host Ball State. And the volleyball team will have just one game over the weekend. They will be at Northwestern Sunday at 2 o'clock. They will also be in action midweek next week on Wednesday in Carver Hawkeye Arena at 7 p.m. against Penn State. And women's soccer will be in action tonight versus Nebraska. That game will be at 7 p.m. Catch all the highlights from that right here on HawkeyeSports.com. And they will have another match on Sunday at Northwestern at 2.30 p.m. And the football team will play under the lights Saturday night at 7 p.m. against the Penn State Nittany Lions. This will be the American Needs Farmers game sponsored by Farm Bureau. And it will also be the Black and Gold Spirit Day. Fans in even sections are instructed to wear gold. Fans in the odd sections are instructed to wear black. Always a great sight under the lights in Kinnick Stadium. That's all we have for this week's Hawkeye Sports Report. Best of luck to everyone in action this weekend and go Hawks!